Hi friend, my name is Hunter from interactive.studio and in today's video we're going to take a look at this logo reveal using this spotlight or array effect inside Adobe After Effects. Now as you can see here, this is all the layers that we're going to work with and basically what happens is we create the array effect and that one's down here. So if we turn that off, you can see that the ray is gone and we use the uh, the part of the logo to create the ray and then we duplicate that layer and create it as a mask layer using a luma uh, mat here which just basically means uh, the light value so anything that's black means it will conceal anything and anything that's white will be revealed. So as you can see here, as we uh, play through it, anything that's white is revealed. And what's happened here is, as you can see, if we just used a Luma to just blast the light here without creating some sort of delay, or then it would uh, not reveal everything. So I've got an effect on top of that which is the echo effect. If I turn this off, you can see it only reveals uh, the logo in a short portion. If you're learning After Effects, then the best way to speed up your workflow is to learn the keyboard shortcuts, and there's a lot of them. I've created a keyboard shortcut PDF that will show you all the hotkeys inside of After Effects. And depending on your workflow, you can pick the ones you would like to use. My personal favorite shortcut is the Command Alt home shortcut which will center the anchor point in the center of a text layer or a shape layer or any layer inside of after effects so if you want to learn more shortcuts like this one check the link in the description below to download your after effects hotkey pdf all right back to the video so what i'm going to do is come in here i'll create a new composition and i'll go 1920 by 1080 and I'm looking at about eight seconds for the duration. So we'll change that to eight. And the background color, let's go dark color. Let's go just an off black. I don't want it straight black. I'm going to go into the blues here. Hit OK. And frame rate we don't need at 60. I think I'll put it down to 30, maybe 24. And we'll hit OK. We've created a new composition. All right, so the first thing I want to do is create a solid for my background. That way it's not transparent. And so I just right click in the layers panel down here, or the timeline, and hit solid. And we'll call this BG for background and change the color to, yeah, an off, an off color, an off black. I want it fairly dark. Maybe go into the grays a bit. Not too dark, hit OK, and hit OK again. That puts in our background. Almost picked at the same color as After Effects. Now what we've got to do is we've got to do two things. So we have to bring in our logo, which is here, which is the interactive logo. And what I've got to do is actually break this mark apart from the rest. So what I'll do is just scale this down just a tad. Um, to the size that I would like it. And I have to come up to the layer, down to create, and we create shapes from vector layer. And that'll automatically hide my AI file. If I open up the new layer here that's called outlines, I think it's group one that here is my underscore. So what I'll do is delete that from the first layer, but first I have to duplicate these two layers. So Control or Command D to duplicate them. And now I can delete it here. And I'll just call this one uh, type. And we will delete all the type from the other layer. Just select it all, hit delete, and we'll call this one mark. And so the mark is just the logo mark and what I have to do now is put those two into a composition. So if I right click and just go pre-compose down the bottom there, 
uh, we'll call this mark underscore let's call this uh white ray and we want to keep the duration and move all the attributes to, into the new composition hit ok now I can just hit tab to tab between those two and so what I want to do here is actually uh, scale this up so if I just hit control alt home uh, that'll put my anchor point into the center of the shape and you can either do that with the shortcut or you can use the anchor point tool here and just drag it with the snapping options on and snap it into the center and what I want to do here is scale it so that it appears I maybe want it to start appearing at about one second so I'll hit scale and I'm going to scale it to about down to 10 and I'm not going to go all the way because you now I won't see most of it so then I'll go about two seconds ahead and scale it up to the 77% that the logo was at and so then what we can do is easy ease these so select both the keyframes right click come down easy ease and we'll go into the graph editor and just pull this bezier all the way to the left and I'll just get on this mark here and drop back and I'll just crop it in like so so it just creates this really nice reveal if you go from zero there's no really not much point but this is revealing at 30 percent and it makes it look really really cool really nice and it's a really smooth animation I might just adjust this a little bit more I might bring it back a bit to half a second here and that means we have to adjust all the graph editor here I will just move that back come in here we'll get on the point and reveal it when it's scaling all right let's jump back into our main comp here and we'll add an effect called CC radial fast blur we'll drop that into our effects as you can see here we've got a, a center value so if I just click that little button here and I click on the center value which I think mine was about here you can see that it starts to reveal uh, the, the radial blur so what I'll do is add a keyframe for the position and the amount and I just want to start at zero for the amount and we'll go uh, two seconds ahead I'll just select the layer that I've put the keyframes on and just hit U that'll show all my keyframes and I just want to start bumping the amount up so you can see here we want to go fair way like that maybe and we're going to move the center around so we want to go all the way around until uh, we're stopped revealing the letter so maybe we finish revealing it here and so we'll move the starting position here to a new location so let's go down here maybe so it's shining up like so and so over the course of it it reveals and starts shining up into the air now I'll drop an effect underneath the radial fast blur to bring back the the actual the underscore here so that's called CC composite we'll just drop that back and we'll composite it back in front and we want to uncheck RGB only and I'm going to drop it in the front here and so now now what I might add is actually uh, just a slight blur so I'll add a fast block box blur and we'll just go like 0.1 we'll take a look at that reveals like so and I think maybe here we want to start uh, getting rid of the mark so maybe you start at six seconds 
and we'll go into that light ray layer select both the keyframes Control c Control v to paste them i'll just right click them come down to keyframe assistant and time reverse them so they're going in the opposite direction and we'll go and take a look at the graph editor and trim that so it disappears earlier than the end let's go back into there you go it starts to disappear i think we started at six seconds so we can grab the amount now and go from the amount back to uh maybe not quite zero maybe the 10 maybe we'll take a look at that so that it starts to fade back and i think i want it to easy ease maybe but i want it to go one direction so we'll go that way may move this keyframe that disappears there so maybe we cut this layer in but I want that to get to zero so we'll drop the amount all the way to zero and we'll take a look at where it disappears there and so I'll go into my uh, graph editor and just move this a little bit so that then it drops away I think it's fading it's dropping away too early so maybe we have to change the size of this we drop this one down to zero I'll just extend it a little bit Right now we need to look at the actual reveal. So if we actually come up here and just duplicate this layer, Control or Command D, we'll drop it up to the top. I'll rename this with another um, upward mask at the end of it. And so now what I can do is actually drop the echo effect. So if I go echo, we want to drop it. Um, Maybe before the composite. And we want it to really echo. So what I had is it echoing quite a bit to start with. And so we'll go 60 just to see what that looks like. And it really blasts, as you can see. And reveals it. Like that. And then I had it drop off. So then I'll go from 60 down to uh, zero somewhere here we'll go zero didn't add a keyframe oh yes it did let's go and look for those keyframes and so I've got 60 frames so then I've got the echo effect going from 60 down to zero so that's when it disappears and we'll just replay that the echo effect plays a little bit slower maybe I want it to get to zero before it could start up earlier yeah that looks all right all right now we need to turn this light ray into a mask so what I'll do is go uh, into my track mat options which you can toggle down here if you just click that and we go into the track mat options and we use a luma mat and so you can see the luma mat here reveals the actual writing and so maybe we need to adjust the amount to a bit higher maybe 90 because we want a fair bit of the letters to be revealed most of the time so we'll take a look at that
and I believe I also had a levels, a levels adjustment, just to correct the lighting a little bit. If I drop that on the end here. Just crunch it a little bit. Maybe we can't see all my levels. But we're looking at an alpha, aren't we? So there you go. If we just crunch the levels a tad, it will create a better reveal because it's actually affecting the alpha that the Luma mat is using. And so then we can have a, a bigger reveal and then it will fade off. And then I just had some effects on top, uh, which just help out a little bit. So I add an adjustment layer and we'll call this one uh, noise. And just a little bit of noise helps with uh, the effect. So we'll drop uh, noise layer on let's go really low five percent you can see it it's already starting to pop up you don't want a really really big um, and also i had a vignette so i'll just drop a a vignette on and drop the vignette effect on top CC vignette and drop that on and that's under the noise layer so the noise affects the actual it affects the vignette as well as everything under it all right so if we let that render out let's go full and i'll let that render out all right there's the effect of the light reveal i just want to show you a few things that you could change uh, but you've got to keep in mind. So what you could do is change the actual direction of the light rays. And that's just the position of the radial fast blur. So it's the start position or the center position. And so it'll shoot out from wherever that is. And so you could, because you've got two of them here, uh, I would suggest uh, parenting one to the other, uh, which I've just accidentally parented. Uh, you could parent the one of the centers to the other center so that when you add keyframes to one and adjust one, it uh, will adjust the other one. And that's just using the pick whip here and dragging it down to the other center. Uh, another thing that I would look at is the fade off of the effect here. And that comes from in here, uh, our inner mask we can push the blur radius up. Let's talk about a few things that you could actually add to this effect to make it look a little bit better. So one of them is a glow. Uh, and glow inside artifacts, the default artifacts glow isn't the best. But if you start layering these effects, and what I start with is a low uh, glow radius with a... This one in this case is a low intensity. However, we want the first layer to have a higher intensity than the second layer. So this one's actually set to uh, 0 .0 0.05. And so it's lower than one here. Uh, but I've increased the glow radius and I dropped the opacity as well. And so you just wanna create a really light glow. I could drop the opacity even further. So it's just a really light effect. Alright, until next time, I'll see you later.